So hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Dream Interpretations where I interpret your guys' dreams that you send me. So in this week, I got actually three dreams uh, from Karen. The, the other thing I'd like to mention is that the names I use in these videos aren't actually the, the real person's name. The reason I, I do that is actually uh, to protect the person's identity as much as I can. So if you guys would like to send me your dreams, uh, make sure to send it to me at my email, which is dreaminterpretation2020 at gmail.com. And you can actually find all that information and also the checklist to what to include in the email in the description uh, down below. All right, so let's get started with the, with the dreams. So three days ago, I had a dream within a dream and I was in a dark place and I could not see anything. It's like I was being pulled in. Usually I'd fight it and wake up, but this time I could hear myself saying, don't fight it, just see what happens. So God shows me right away that, um, that that's actually a nightmare. So it actually was a dream, but all of a sudden, as soon as you said that you're being pulled in, it's almost like as if you were being pulled out of the dream and it turned into a nightmare. So obviously some, some kind of demonic spirit was actually, um, yeah, showing you the plans that it has for you. So what the enemy has planned for you. So I carried on staring at this dark space and a gigantic eye pupil appeared. It was floating and rotating midair and I suddenly felt the urge to walk to it to see what the eye was looking at. So yeah, so just like I said, that demonic spirit is just basically showing you what it's what 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 plans it has for you. And as I got there where the eye was, it was like that eye became connected to mine and I was seeing as if it was it, as if it was my own. What I saw was this place full of grass and tall trees, but it was pitch black and the sky had a red color illuminating, but the light never got to the ground. As the eye was rotating, I saw a silhouette of a woman, but it was like a shadow and she was just there almost in a squatting position with hands forward, almost like a cat creeping. And then I woke up immediately after and it was like exactly 3 a.m. So yeah, this just uh, reaffirms what I was just saying. So like it says, yeah, the eye was basically showing you the plans uh, that it has for you, what the enemy has planned for you. Uh, as soon as you saw a silhouette uh, through the eye, the, that floating pupil, um, that silhouette was actually the, the, the demonic spirit. So you're actually seeing that's that demonic spirit in your, in your nightmare um, appearing. So yeah, it was actually appearing and showing itself to you. That's why you saw it in a squatting position, all very creepy like a cat. And the fact that you woke up at 3 a.m. kind of just uh, reaffirms that because at 3 a.m. is usually when, uh, usually from like nighttime, so like from 12 to uh, all the way like before like dawn, um, it usually like 5, 5 a.m. So it's usually, it's always important to pray uh, right before you go to bed that, you know, the, that no demonic spirit will come and attack you during the night. And like I said, you were having a dream and the thing basically took you out and wanted to show you what it had, what, what it wanted to show you. So, so it's always important to pray that God protects you. So yeah, that, that was the first dream. Now I'm going to read the second. So the day before yesterday, the second dream, I had a lot of things happening. But the main things I remember seeing was hair growing underneath both my feet. And I was hiding it with a blanket and it felt creepy. I thought of people saw it they would think it was strange so yeah so god is basically showing me that the hair that was on your feet was actually was actually things that you need prayer for so god is showing me that uh, that you need deliverance for a couple of things and aside from the dream god is also showing me um like not part of the dream but what his holy spirit is showing me like in my heart to tell you is that it almost seems as if uh, that you're interested in the occult, occultic things, like almost like, I don't know, I see like, like you're interested in psychics and interested in, in other stuff as like, like, I'm not going to say like Ouija boards, but those are examples of what God is kind of showing me. It's almost like you have an interest in those things and you need to be careful. So that's what the dream is showing you right at the beginning is that you have things that you've opened the door to. So you've, you've, yeah, so somehow you've opened the door to these demonic things to enter in, in your life. So that's why you were seeing, and you were kind of embarrassed as well, because it was also creepy that you were seeing this hair growing under, on your feet. So like I just said before, is, is that you open the door to, to these things. And, and the way that you open the door to, to the demonic to basically come into your life is usually by, um, for an example, is usually if you go see a psychic. You, that opens the door because it says uh, specifically in the Bible that you don't you don't go to psychics or any of that or necromancers. I think people that talk to the dead. So here's a scripture of of where it says in the Bible not to uh, go to psychics and stuff like that. So um, in Deuteronomy uh, Deuteronomy chapter eighteen uh, verse ten, there shall not be found among you any of one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire or that useth divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch. 
or a, cha or a uh, this is verse 11, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or necromancer. So yeah, when it says necromancer, like I mentioned before, I think that basically means talking to the dead. So going to people, you know, that says, that say that, you know, they can talk to your dead grandma, and it's like, no, the Bible specifically, specifically says not to do that. And so that's what I was just talking about, was, uh, was uh, you know, that, that's how you open the doors to, to, the, to the demonic entering your life, is through doing any any of these things that it mentions in Deuteronomy, in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 10 to 11. So the other way that you can open the door to, to these demonic spirits into your life is actually by sinning. So that's the other way that I didn't mention. So my boyfriend was in my dream too, but he said he was going for a walk. After he left, I set out to go on a walk alone to figure out what I will do with the hair on the feet. I walked through a dark park, however, on the other side of it, there was a kidnapping or something criminal happening, happening, but I kept walking. It did not scare me. I then emerged on the street and it was an empty cart from a Muslim man just walking past. Yeah, so in, so what Holy Spirit is showing me is that uh, the fact that your boyfriend left and he didn't even give you time to talk to, uh, to talk to you about what, you know, about the hair on your feet. So that just shows me that your boyfriend isn't actually helping you in your spiritual walk. And so then you actually continued in the dream. It says that you continued to walk and you walked and it was very dark and you walked by, uh, by a dark park and like you said, however, on the other side, you saw a kidnapping happening or something criminal. So that basically, so what Holy Spirit is showing me is that, yeah. So if you don't take care of the problem with the hair on your feet, which basically signifies the demonic spirit uh, oppressing you, then uh, Holy Spirit is showing me that uh, just like you're walking in the dark part, that you're not going to be protected by, by God. And so that's why you were saying all of these, uh, you know, there was a kidnapping, there was criminal uh, activity happening. Um, God is just showing me that, uh, yeah, that, that, that protection, that Holy Spirit is protecting you. If you don't take care of the problem, you'll be on the wrong path and ultimately lose your way. Yeah. So I then emerged on a street and it was empty apart from a Muslim man just walking past it. Uh, it had now become daylight and I was in a different street with a tree in the middle with a beautiful rose like pink flowers. There was a boy walking next to the tree so I just picked the flower and I could reach and kept walking. I then woke up after that. Uh, I woke up at 5 a.m. So yeah, the, so, uh, near the end of the dream it says, yeah, that you basically, you continued, you were walking in the park and you went to another street and you saw a Muslim man. So that just, uh, like I was saying before, about, that if you don't take care of the problem with the hair on your feet, which is the demonic uh, oppression or the, the things that you've opened the door to your life, you'll lose your way in, in Islam. And then after, and then after I just see that the dream ends. Yeah, and that's all I see from the rest of the dream. So all right, uh, going on to number three. So me and my boyfriend went to fuel up at a regular Shell fuel station. We were just parked next to a fuel gauge and it was in the evening. It just started getting dark. In the car, we were just sitting there watching watching a car that looked like a Nissan GT, but my boyfriend said it was an Audi RS3. We then saw a smaller car on the drive side and my boyfriend asked, do you want that as your first car? I said no. I glanced back and it was the name and it had a name saying Sia in white. And the car was also white in fancy writing. We tried to drive forward, but the car wouldn't start. So yeah, Holy Spirit is just showing me that, yeah, you guys were just fueling up at the station. Um, the fact that you were guys were in a car and looking at other cars, that signifies min uh, ministries. So it almost seems as if you were driving the car and that was your ministry. Yeah, so the fact that you were, at, you were, you were filling up the station, it's almost like, yeah, you're getting closer to God, you're at the church, getting closer. And then all of a sudden, uh, your boyfriend mentions, uh, you know, you guys are watching cars and it says, look at that, your ministry, you know, and you, you point to a Nissan GT. And then after, uh, you know, he says about the Audi RS3. So that's just showing different ministries. But your boyfriend is suggesting you different other ministries. So it's almost like, but the fact that you're sitting in a car, you're sitting, you're you're already on the path to to do your ministry. But the fact that your boyfriend is kind of just, it almost seems as if he's leading you astray by saying, "Oh, look at that!" You know, for example, like if it's another ministry of worship or another ministry of deliverance or another ministry, and he's just seeing those cars. I mean, is that is that is that what you want to be your first car, your first min, you know, your ministry? Almost saying like, "Do you want that one to be your ministry?" And then you said, "No, I'm sticking with this car." You know, I'm sticking with with my ministry, the ministry that God has shown me. So then the dream continues, it says, we tried to drive forward, but the car wouldn't start. However, it was moving on its own. So I waited for it to get us to a secluded place so that I could push. Once I came out to push the car, it would move, it would, sorry, it says here, it would move itself so that, so the last time. I just put my hands on it and the car started. Yeah, so Holy Spirit is showing me that, uh, so the fact that you were driving the car and you lost control, that just signifies, so you're not ready to do the ministry, but you're actually kind of in a training mode. So that's why it was kind of you were losing control. You weren't doing it. So this is so you know your your ministry that God has called you to do, your purpose, your calling. 
But the fact is, is that yeah, you you didn't have control over it, so that's just that's just showing you that you need to, you, yeah, you still you still need to be in training mode. You still need to practice or or understand that ministry that you're going to be a part of. I just put my hands on it and the car started. So I started celebrating. My boyfriend was clapping and laughing. My dream changed. So the fact that you know you were happy about the, the car starting, yet you were training for your ministry, that it was just taking off, and the fact that your boyfriend was clapping, but I get Holy Spirit is showing me that you were that he was laughing, but not you know laughing at you sarcastically, almost being like, out of all the ministries you picked this one, and now it's getting off, and you're so happy about it. So it's not good that he's making fun of you. He's basically mocking you. So my dream changed, and I was on a motorway bridge, looking at the bottom of the bridge, and the middle and the middle slip road was long, and the part where it separates with the motorway. It was decorated with fairy lights and candles. I then found myself walking at the bottom of the bridge and everyone was clapping for me. All right, so I'm gonna interpret that. So I'm just gonna mention right away, I don't really know what the slip is, but I think that's, because I don't I actually don't even drive, I'm not really into cars, but um, is, is the slip like where the ambulances go? Like, is, is that what you mean? Yeah, but in any case, I, even though I don't know about driving and any of that, even though I'm not really into the whole driving aspect or, you know, cars, what really what God is showing you is that this is your path. So the fact that it was a motorway, a highway, whatever, you know, freeway, God is basically showing that this is, that you're on track. So he wants you to continue on that path and to like, like the dream just switched. But before that, right before it was you basically figuring out your ministry and getting it started by pushing it. Um, so yeah, so the fact that you're on your motorway, like I just said, uh, Holy Spirit is just, is just uh, showing you that, that you're, this is the path that you need to take. You're on the right path. So then I found myself walking at the bottom of the bridge and everyone was clapping for me. I was so happy. And these black ladies kept appearing on the side of the road, but midair clapping and shaking my hands. And they were dressed in white robes with a blue belt, almost like they were just floating and not suspended on anything. So yeah, Holy Spirit is just showing me that those were actually angels. And they were kind of just like congratulating you, like, you know, yay, you know, you're, you're going on the right path. This is exactly what God wants you to do. And like you said, they weren't, they weren't actually just walking and, you know, shaking your hand and clapping. They were actually just floating. So yeah, God is just showing me that just, that's just the angels that were just happy. I then started walking backwards, praising God and a truck drove past on the next lane. Uh, and I heard a voice telling me that I'm going to pray for the world in and then blank. There's, there's nothing. Uh, I never heard that place. It's like the truck lights came on and blurred that part. Uh, I then had a vision of an old of uh, I then had a vision of an elderly man in his room knelt down, uh, knelt down, praying with his hand over his Bible. And then I went back up to to the slip road. So yeah, that that's really cool. Part of the dream is basically yeah, as as you were walking backwards and the truck happened, that was very literal. You know, God was actually showing you you're going to be praying for the world in this way, in this capacity. And the fact, and then after it continues and says that you actually were. Uh, you know, you had a vision of a ma of an old man, you know, with his hand on the Bible. The Holy Spirit shows me that you'll be joining in prayer uh, with people across the world. So then the dream continues. It said, I woke up in my dream and apparently my alarm didn't sound. So my boyfriend was late for work. I wasn't laying properly, so my neck was hurting. I heard huffing and puffing. So I got up and asked if he was okay. He wasn't happy because he thought my alarm didn't ring or that I didn't check uh, my phone. And I reminded him that he double checked it. And then he went on to say he was going to miss work, laid back down on the sofa and played a, a gospel song. So God is just showing me that, you know, the way that you basically woke up was that you had pain on your neck. So that basically, so that basically signifies, I almost saw it like a yoke. So it almost seems as if you're, you're being stressed by your boyfriend. And then after it shows that you were hearing huffing and puffing and you're hearing that your boyfriend was kind of getting angry, he was getting angry uh, about that. You know, I'm going to be late for work, you know, work and, and Holy Spirit is showing me that that's, you know what God has called them to do and almost seem it almost seems as if he was finding you a nuisance and kind of blaming you for not figuring out what he has to do with God then after yeah you were just explaining to him I double yeah that you double checked it and uh, and then after he just you know he went to the sofa and played a gospel song it almost seems as if uh, as if your boyfriend is uh, is almost like hindering you from advancing with God so it's almost as if your boyfriend is uh, is making you doubt yourself because he's causing all the stress in your life you know how he just woke you up and huffing him and huffing and puffing and angry and causing stress yeah it's it's almost as if he's hindering you from from advancing with god so then after he says that you know he was going to miss work he laid back down on the sofa and played a gospel song so that kind of just god is showing me that your boyfriend isn't really there with god his relationship with god isn't really that he doesn't really have a strong relationship with god it, it almost seems as if that's what he wants but it's it's he's not there yet so holy spirit is showing me that he's not as so your boyfriend isn't as close to god uh, as he's as he's appearing to be um his relationship with god isn't isn't there yet 
So that's why he went to the gospel. He went to go listen to a gospel song. It almost seems as if he, instead of praying and stuff, and rather than asking Holy Spirit why, why he, why he's angry and why he was late to work, it almost seems as if he just went. He just went to to this to the sofa and just played a gospel song. Almost like, okay, this is what it means to be a Christian. But just go and you know, and play a play a play a song, play a Christian song. So then, so then the the dream continues, and he says. He then started praying for me, canceling my bad dreams. And I stopped him and I said, no, 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 wait. My dream was a good dream from the Lord. So he just started thanking God for my life and my dreams. And then I woke up. So Holy Spirit is showing me that instead of him actually asking, like I just mentioned, instead of him asking Holy Spirit, why am I angry? Why am I late for work? It almost seems as if he just thought it was you. You were the problem. You know, so he started canceling the bad dreams and all the, all the other stuff rather than consulting with the Holy Spirit because his relationship isn't really there. So th then all of a sudden you were like, wait, wait, wait a second. Why are you canceling my bad dreams? Holy Spirit just showed me, you know, well, you know what my calling is or, you know, my path, you know, like the dream you just had. So then after he just switched, it almost seems like he just switched and he was like, oh, okay, well then I'm just going to thank God. And I'm just going to, you know, we're just going to pray, you know, praise Holy Spirit and thank him for, for your life and stuff. So it almost seems as if your boyfriend is almost uh, double minded. As if you'll just go along with whatever whatever anyone else is doing. It's almost it almost seems as if he just switches real quick. He's not really concrete about his opinions. He doesn't really he doesn't really like I said he doesn't have that that big of a relationship with God, and so uh, and that shows right. He was very double minded. He just goes with whatever, you know. He just goes along with with the flow kind of thing. It's not really it's not really you know if it's if it's his decision. If he if he's wrong, he won't just admit. He'll just say you know he'll just switch. So then it just says then I woke up and the dream was happening like a dream within a dream. Yeah. And I woke up and the time was 5.09. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the, the dream. So yeah, those are really good three dreams. So like, I just want to reiterate what the, the dreams were meaning, right? The first dream was a dream, but then all of a sudden it switched to a nightmare. Um, and basically what the what the enemy um, his plans was for you. And then after and after you actually saw the spirit that was actually took you out of your dream, because it was a nightmare, like I said. And then the second dream was actually really insightful to, to because it kind of just showed you what you need to f uh, fix, what you need to uh, deal with. Like with, with the hair in your feet, those are basically demonic oppression. So the second dream just highlighted that, that you need to take care of that. And the third dream basically showed you, you know, what, what your calling was. Um, and not only that, but it also showed you, you know, again, it was just like, it was basically highlighting, you know, what the present, where you are at the present, what your situation is like. The third dream also stated about how, you know, like I mentioned with the yoke and how your boyfriend was basically, how your boyfriend was actually preventing you from, uh, from advancing with God. It was almost hindering you. So your boyfriend was actually hindering you and actually uh, causing you mental stress. So thank you so much for sending me your dreams. Um, I hope that this uh, that this helps with your walk with God. I know that a lot of it might be a little bit tough to hear, but like I said, I was just interpreting the dream and what basically God is, is trying to tell you, right, with, with the dreams. But like I just said, thank you so much for sending me your dreams. And for everyone else that's watching, if you'd like me to interpret your dreams, please send your uh, your dreams at my email, which is dreaminterpretation2020 at gmail.com. I also state that in the description, and I also have a checklist of what you need to include in the email. And the three things that you need to include is, uh, so number one on the checklist uh, is try not to omit anything when you're sending me your dream. Um, make sure not to omit, be very specific and as much as possible and try not to omit anything because that could have an effect on the interpretation. And number two is uh, remember to use an, another name because uh, like I said, like I said in the beginning of the video, I actually want to protect your identity. Just like in this video, which basically um, uh, was talking about the, the person's uh, boyfriend. Uh, that, that's why I say, you know, get, to give you another name so that your identity is protected. And number three is remember to state uh, what, what time uh, of day your dream took place. And also if your dream was in HD, if it was kind of blurry, or if it was, uh, there was, it was super dark, or if, there was, or if it was full of color. And those are the three things to include in your email. And also you can find that checklist and my email in the description below. So thanks for watching and God bless.